Amen, Father. It's just good to be here with you. I've been talking to the Father, telling him how great you are. And today, we're going to jump into the Word. And you Word Warriors out there that have been with us this whole time, boy, you are growing. Today, I'm talking about a verse that I love. I've not mastered it yet, but I love the verse. It's all of Proverbs 18.21. Going to hit it from a different angle today. Uh, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that shall that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. I quote this verse a lot. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And, and that means there's only two options here. Death or life when you speak. It's not death, life, and everything else. It's you have impact. When you speak, you minister life. Joy, peace, laughter, goodness, kindness, uh, benefit, something that will benefit someone. Or you go the other way and it's gloom and doom and negative and you are speaking destruction over people and situations. Most people think their words don't have any effect. So they just throw them out there willy-nilly. But we can't do that. If you really understand words, you will. it'll change what you watch on television It'll change what you say. It will change what you listen to. You will realize, oh gosh, I really need to pay attention. I know there are people that say, I don't like that style music. I just don't like that. But I don't listen to the words. Yes, you do. Whether you realize it or not, we do listen to the things. And just like my mouth is speaking words of life and death, so is everybody else's. And so we need to guard against what's coming in and be careful about what's going out. You know, uh, even there's Christian songs that we shouldn't be listening to because they're not truthful. They speak, but they're not speaking truth. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, it says this, Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. If you're saying that listening to or watching certain things don't bother you, you're already deceived. You're deceived. So what if you're in a situation where you're hearing negative words? What should you do? Well, in Isaiah 54, verse 17, it tells us, No weapon formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise up against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Notice it said, no weapon formed against me. This is a weapon. This is a weapon. It can be used for good. It can be used for bad, for destruction. No weapon formed against me is going to prosper. But then it says, and every tongue that rises up against me in judgment in other words, they're saying things that they shouldn't say. I have to condemn those words. I'm meant to condemn and thou shalt condemn. I've learned that with doubt and unbelief. If I'm around somebody that's full of worry, doubt, unbelief, it's like they're emanating negative forces. And, and those things plant seeds in me. If you start talking now, oh, I don't, God's not going to answer that. No. You know, God's just, uh, no, I don't, he's just not going to work. Those things are planting seeds. And we have to be careful that we speak against him and say, I'm not accepting this. You may have to go outside to do it so you don't offend somebody. But we've got to be careful. Let me give you an example. Let's say it's flu season. I'm not talking about COVID. I'm talking about flu, flu, <laughs> that kind of flu. Let's say it's flu season. And, and you're thinking to yourself, uh, boy... I'm feeling good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I don't have the flu. And somebody comes along and says, you know that flu's going to get you. Oh, it is. My lands, it's going rampant. It's running through every family. It's not slowing down for anything. I'm telling you, you're going to get it. Going to get. You're with people all the time. You're going to get it, Melissa. Then they say, you know, my sister had it. Oh, Lord, help us all. She got sick. She got to throwing up. She's in bed three days. We didn't know she's going to live or die. Is that bad? And my brother, my brother had it at the other end. 
and he was sick and he was just couldn't hardly go and and you're sitting there thinking i this goes against the word of god you understand that god doesn't put sickness on you that comes from satan and the bible if you if you're going to say anything and i know people think i'm weird but i'd rather be weird for jesus than a nut for the, like the world's got out there Here's what you need to say. And if you want to go outside, say it out there. But you need to say, God, that flu does not belong to me. I speak against it. And in 1 Peter 2, 24, your word says that by your stripes, I was healed. On Calvary, when it says that we were saved, that word means that delivered, we were set free, we were saved eternally to be with Jesus it means wholeness it means health it's not just a one thing yep say bingo it's everything you need to check that one out for yourself I may teach on that again one of these days so and while they're speaking sickness and trying to put it on you you need to speak against it it's like if you decide to go on an airplane flight and you're going to travel somewhere. Isn't it amazing how many people want to tell you about the airplanes that have gone down lately? You don't need to listen to that. That plants doubt in you. And so you need to step outside and say, God, you are the one that ordained me go on this trip. It's your plan for me to go. You're my refuge. You're my strength. You're my high tower. You're my shelter. If this wasn't a safe flight, you would have told me up front. Speak in line with God and his word, not Satan and his word. Here's another thing. Uh, you know, I had a, a man, I, I knew a man that said, I had a melanoma right here. And he said, I had a sore right here. And people would come up and say, oh, that's a melanoma. Oh, yeah, I know him. I can spot him a mile off. That's what that is. You know, I had a friend's ear fell off. Yeah, whole ear just fell right off. Now, I doubt that story. However, however, you receive what you want to receive. You can receive the fear that's attached to that, the doubt, the unbelief. You can, you can take it and accept it. Or you can step out and say, listen, God, this ear, if it's something that I need to see about, you tell me and I'll go check it out. And if it's not, you heal it, take care of it, and it's done. Why are we accepting those wrong words? Because we don't know any, we don't see the power that's behind it or the source that's behind it. Every word, every word is issuing life, death, life or death, and, and we're going to eat the fruit of it. So every time somebody starts speaking over you things that are negative, it's seeds going in your spirit, man, seeds going in here. That's why we've got to stop. The moment we hear it, we've got to stop and say, no, in the name of Jesus, I don't accept this. That does not belong to me. I think we need to say that sometimes about the things that go through our head. There's lies up there. And a lot of them came from people. I, I'm not going to let somebody plant a seed of doubt in me. I've come too far for that. I don't want to hear that. Death and life. The power of every word we hear and every word we speak, be sure it lines up with the word of God. It's truth. It's positive. And leave that other stuff for somebody that doesn't know better. You do. You know better than that. Oh boy, I'm telling you. We need to know that weapons, that words are weapons to be used for good or we can use them for bad. Father, in the name of Jesus right now, look out there, Lord. Look at all those people. You just love them so much. And I pray for every one of them. But, Lord, I pray especially that we get this message in our spirit, man. Help us to speak truth always. <clears throat> to speak positive words always. Lord, I just thank you right now for this. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Love you. See you tomorrow. Same time, same station. God bless.